Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar, Your Guide to Medicare. My name is Kelly Blount, and I'm the Program Marketing Specialist here at General Electric Credit Union. We're so glad you've joined us as we have a lot of great content ahead. Thanks to technology, we're excited to be able to continue connecting with you on such an important topic and wanted to thank you all for tuning in from the comfort of your home, work, or wherever you're joining from today. And with that, I'm going to turn this over to Eric Waldron to introduce himself and today's guest speaker. Thank you, Kelly. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. It looks like we've got a big crowd here today, north of 60 people, so that's great. Uh, for today's webinar, or excuse me, webinar on Medicare. Um, a quick introduction of myself before we get started. Uh, as Kelly said, my name is Eric Waldron, and I am one of the uh, financial advisors with the credit union. I've been in the financial services industry for nearly 30 years now, with my last nine being here at the credit union. Uh, my job is simple. It's to help our members with retirement planning, investments, risk management. Uh, a few of the areas I, uh, I cover range from investment and asset allocation to retirement income strategies, social security, risk management, focusing on life and long-term care, and finally, comprehensive financial planning uh, with our award-winning software, Money Guide Pro. Uh, if you want to dive in any further on any of this, you can go to our website under the Investment Services tab, and you'll be able to find some uh, further information on all of this. So uh, with that said, let's get on to today's topic of Medicare and our guest speaker. She is the CEO and owner of Giardini Medicare, and who I personally turn to for all things Medicare for my clients, Joanne Giardini Russell. Thanks, Eric. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, we will try and make this as actually exciting as we can because Medicare can be pretty dry. There's a lot of information. I will try and get through uh, a fair amount of content in about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. I'd like to keep some, you know, um, time at the end for questions. So like Kelly said, please just uh, put your questions in there. Eric and Kelly can kind of monitor those for me. But again, I know there's a lot of content. I know I tend to talk fast. I'm sorry, I'm Italian. And, and we just, there's a lot to do with Medicare. So I'm going to get right into it. Um, I do want to just first say that we are, uh, I want to explain this to people. We're an insurance agency. So we work, you know, with the folks at your credit unions and we um, are based in Michigan, but we are an insurance agency at the end of the day. So we don't, um, sell any of the types of things that Eric does. We only work in the Medicare space. So some people are surprised that Medicare only people exist, but we do. Uh, we work with all the carriers. We do work in Ohio and uh, about a dozen states. But this is how we make our money is the, the Medicare product. And a lot of people always just want to know at the end of this, how do you get paid? Okay, we come in and we talk a lot about the government and things like that. But at the end of the day, we're insurance agents. And I also want to always say that, you know, the credit union doesn't um, bring us in here in terms of they don't pay us and we don't pay them to be in front of you, which is kind of a nice relationship. It's just, um, you know, finding good people to work with. And, and that's kind of what we do with Eric as well. I was mentioning to Eric prior to starting this that this year there's 4.2 million people turning 65 just this year. There are a lot of very confused people out there. Um, probably you're one of those folks. Confusion is really the foundation, unfortunately, of my industry. Um, you know that. You you see the postcards, you see the mailers, you see all this garbage kind of just floating into your mailbox every day. The robocalls, we hear people complaining constantly about that type of thing. Just understand that, unfortunately, you're a target. Uh, you just are. Your information is very, very public out there. If I wanted to get a list, I could actually show you how we could do almost a Google search and find every single person in your exact neighborhood that's turning 65 this year in the next three months kind of thing. So it's crazy with technology. Um, it, it just, it's the, it's the way of the world these days, but it's also confusing because there's a lot of money involved in Medicare. So that's why you've got places like Walmart, uh, Amazon, people talking about it. So, you know, there's just a lot in it. So you just kind of, you know, be careful, learn what you can from various sources. Um, you've got this to contend with the TV, the Joe Namath, the uh, J Jimmy Walker. Uh, you've all seen these, these, you know, advertisements, they're still going on, uh, not to the same degree as they are in the fall, but they're still going on this year, right now in January, February, March, because we're in another enrollment window. So it's, it's. Um, I know it's frustrating. I can't do anything to shut these things off. I wish I could. Um, how do you learn about Medicare? This is one of the, the questions we get all the time. What's the best way to learn? There's no best way, but 
medicare.gov you can start learning things there however i'll just kind of warn you um, a lot of people turn here first and it's just difficult for you to get into that system and understand what you're trying to even looking for right what do you put in the search bar it's just it's challenging we use it every day so we're in here all the time for doing drug plans and things like that but a lot of people will go in here and look for you know plan types in ohio the zip code understand and just know that a lot of the information is not accurate in there all right so you got to be careful with it it's really accurate for some things but not for things about finding plans and you know uh, what's available to you so it's hard it's hard to learn that way i think there's better ways i'll kind of talk to you about the end i like youtube i like videos i love what eric and kelly are doing at the credit union with just all that on-demand webinars things like that it's a great way to learn it's a great way to you know, look at other people. We've got a lot of colleagues in our industry that do great YouTube channels with Medicare. So that's, to me, um, almost a preferred way to learn these days, as are these webinars as they've kind of grown into that. You do have to be careful where you're going for information. This was a, a piece a few years ago that I still use because it's just, it's so important to see something like this, that Costco magazine, I'm not saying, you know, that they're the end all be all for Medicare advice, but they put out um, in this case, some bad information. So this article was about retirement. Um, part of what Eric does is the planning, right? And he does bring in Medicare and get your Medicare right. He totally agrees with that. I do too, but you got to go to the right sources. So this article from Costco um, is wrong. So that upper uh, right-hand box, it says, first, you need to enroll in Medicare when you're first eligible. In fact, postponing it will result in a late enrollment penalty that is not accurate okay that is totally inaccurate so a lot of times people will read this right and i would expect it to be accurate um but this is not they told me they fact checked it with medicare.gov they could not have because they wouldn't have had that information in there so in this case if somebody reads it and then they're talking to their friend a few days later they're all of a sudden they're repeating wrong information and this happens so very much in my space it's like the game of telephone remember as a kid you know, one person told the next person, told the next person, told the next person. By the end of that, 10 people down later, the, the information is totally different. That's exactly what Medicare is like. It's really difficult and you have to really take it with a grain of salt what your neighbors, your friends, your family, your HR people, all the, everybody around you is kind of saying about Medicare. So this is kind of welcome to my world. This is what we deal with every single day. So what we do as an organization is we tr we really focus on the transition to the Medicare system. That's why, you know, the transition to Medicare team, that's exactly what we do. So we're really working with people that are really making that first foray into Medicare. So you're maybe 65, you're maybe 68, you're maybe, you know, my afternoon call at two o'clock is somebody on disability that's starting Medicare next month. So it, it just depends on when you're eligible and how do you get there. But at the point that you need Medicare insurance, that's where we want to come in and, and really just to help you get it right. Because a lot of this stuff, and you'll see, I'll talk about some problems and mistakes, we can't always fix them. So when someone comes back to us at 86, we can't fix those mistakes. So let's get it right in the beginning. So that is kind of where we focus on things. So we spend our day every day and webinars and doing everything we can to, under, to, to get this information across to you. We talk about what Medicare is. I'll go through these things today, like I said, rather quickly though. Um, do I need it? That I will tell you, We, uh, uh, my son and I were just talking, we wanna have a whole separate webinar on that because do I need Medicare is like the biggest, biggest thing to understand. We only want you to go get it if you need it, all right? And a lot of people accidentally get it or just go get it for the wrong reasons or or do need it and they didn't get it. So it's, it's really a topic that needs to be addressed. If you do need it, how do you go get that, right? How much is it going to cost you? What is it going to cover? How do you put all of those things together? What does reality look like? These are the dumb little things like, well, what card do I bring to the doctors the first time I go in? It might seem like a kind of a dumb question, but it's not. It's a whole new system, all right? And at the end of that, we want to hammer out all the questions, get everything answered so that your job is really just to go on and retire, right? And just to go on to whatever you're going to do next. You picked wisely. We want to help you pick the right plan and you know, not have to swap things out and change things and be aggravated every year. So, so Medicare, what is Medicare? Medicare is just insurance. All right. So you're going to hear me talk about a lot of the government involvement of these, you know, components here. But Medicare is just federal health insurance. It's no different than you buying something from MedMutual or United Healthcare or Aetna or something like that it's really the same. You're just buying it from the federal government, okay? And because the government's involved, really people 
you know, get much more wigged out than they should. But, you know, it it can be um, frustrating at times because of maybe the slowness or things like that. But in general, it's actually a pretty good system. It's not designed to pay 100% of your healthcare costs. But when you think about your your group insurance you might be on today, or maybe maybe you are buying something direct for it with MedMutual, that's not, none of those plans are paying 100% either, okay? And none of those plans are designed to be taken overseas, to be used out of our country. Um, pretty much Medicare is like that. It's just going to be, it's designed to use here. It's not designed to pay 100% of your healthcare costs. The people that are eligible for Medicare, these are people that are 65 or older, and those are people on disability. Like I said, my afternoon call, he's 52, I think, and he's eligible now based on disability. He's had it for two years and now he's eligible for Medicare. The other couple of ca couple categories with, with uh, Medicare is people that are, have a diagnosis of end-stage renal disease or ALS. Those are two medical conditions where people get fast-tracked over to the Medicare system because they need to be because of their poor health. Now, there's two components of, of this is original Medicare one. So when I talk about the government piece, I'm talking about original Medicare and I'm talking about the two parts called part A and part B. So part A is hospital coverage. It's essentially gonna cover you when you're an inpatient. It's gonna cover you if you're in a skilled nursing facility. It's gonna cover you if you're under hospice care. And those are generally your areas where that's where part A is going to cover you. There are deductibles. Uh, you can see them on the left hand side 1556 for every 60 day benefit period um, there's some co-insurance and things like that i'm not going to really drill into those because really at the end of the day you should be having a product in place that pays these things for you so that's what we do for people we put the insurance piece in place that covers all of these deductibles and co-pays part b now the part b is the part that comes with the premium so you can see in the lower right part a is typically zero for most people 99% uh, of people pay nothing for that, but Part B has a premium. The base premium this year is $170.10. So that means if you're filing for Medicare this year, you're gonna pay at least $170.10, unless the only people that do not pay anything for Medicare, and again, think back to the Joe Namath commercials, this is where this comes in. Those people that are on Medicaid and Medicare, both, programs. If you're entitled to and, and eligible for both of those programs, then you will not pay the $170, okay? The state is typically picking up that charge and paying the federal government for that. We're not spending much time at all talking about that today. We're talking about most people that are not on Medicaid are going to come in and they're going to pay at least $170.10. Part B is going to cover the rest of the services that you're used to, the doctors, the chemotherapy, the x-rays, the CAT scans, the yeah, vaccinations, things like that. So that's what Part B is. Part B has a deductible of $233. It's important just that that number right there, that's going to be a consistent number that you hear as we talk about Medicare, but that's pretty much the only deductible on here to pay attention to. So Part B deductible this year is $233. Part A, and this is really important, just I want to emphasize that it does not cover long-term care expenses. You heard Eric mention long-term care planning, super, super important. Please get with him to discuss that. It is not going to be covered by Medicare. We get emails, we get phone calls all the time. You know, my mom needs, you know, care now she can't live alone. My mom needs a ramp built for a wheelchair. She, those things are not covered by long-term care. So most people in this country are going to need some form of care at some point. So you really need to discuss with your advisor like Eric that, you know, how are you going to handle it? And I'm not, I don't advocate any product or anything. Those are his discussions, but you basically, in my mind, you need cash. How are you going to have cash? It can be savings. It could be products, be whatever you want, but just please understand that Medicare itself is health insurance. It's not long-term care insurance. Part B, just remember too, this point here is, is super important. Important. Um, it's going to give you 80% coverage. Okay. And then the key thing to understand here is that there's no cap to that 20%. So if you are only enrolled in Part A and Part B of Medicare, you have a 20% exposure that is not capped. You are all used to having a financial cap in there of your, maybe your group insurance has $4,000 max out of pocket, or maybe a 6,000 or whatever it is, you're used to that. You've gone for 30, 40 years where there's this financial protection, but Medicare is not like that. So I had someone a few years ago, I recall that she had a knee replacement, 
on original Medicare only had Part A and Part B, she got a bill for $12,000 for the knee replacement. So imagine if you had a cancer situation or if you're hospitalized for a couple hundred days, which some people are. Sounds crazy, but it happens. So here are some things that we just like to tell you right away that Medicare is not going to cover and it's not going to cover and this frustrates a lot, a lot of people and we hear it every day, okay, dental. Dental is very expensive. I, a dentist was just telling me recently that you can actually buy permanent dentures. I had no idea. You get them basically screwed into your mouth, top and bottom, and they cost $50,000. So if you're getting something like that, you're not going to find insurance for it. You might have, you might find a plan that pays a whole thousand dollars towards that, okay? But it's not going to happen. Medicare is not going to pay root canals, not going to pay even routine teeth cleaning or anything like that. Um, they're not going to pay for for eye exams, routine eye exams. They're not going to pay for vision exams. They're not going to pay for glasses, not cat cat contacts, things like that. Um, they are going to pay for cataracts, glaucoma, things like that, detached retina. That's under your medical. So I'm just talking about these are just routine eye exams and routine dental, things like that. And same with routine ear. You know, they might pay for a hearing exam, but they're not going to give you um, money and pay for hearing um, hearing aids. You might have to go to Costco and spend 5000 on those, okay? So they can be very expensive. All of these areas can be very expensive for people. Medicare is not going to cover gym memberships, and they're not going to cover prescription medications. Now, they're not covered, but also know that you can you can get coverage or somehow solve for all of those things. Maybe the solve is just cash, but there is a solve for every single one of those, okay? But I'm just saying that Part A and Part B here is not going to cover any of those services. So where are you all going for advice? Um, this, in this case, you're coming to General Electric for a webinar, that's great. Most people are talking to their friends and family. By the time they get to us, they've gone through five, six different channels. Like, well, so I called Social Security and they tell me this. They called my, I asked my doctor, blah, blah, blah. I asked Eric, he didn't know this. He sent me to you guys. So that is kind of how we come into play. I would just caution you to be careful with any of the advice you're getting from any of these places. I do Medicare 12 hour days. That's what our firm does. We do it constantly. That's all we do. And you start to know Medicare after doing that for so many years for 12 hour days, right? Doctors are our clients. They do not know Medicare. Um, HR does not know Medicare. Um, Social Security, you have to understand they are to enroll you into Medicare. They are not Medicare. So they will give wrong advice and can give wrong advice. And again, you know, just back to that whole game of telephone, just be super careful with friends, family. They're all trying to help, but they're all scaring the bejeebers out of you just by you're going to get penalized. You're going to do this. So, you know, so just, just don't listen to everybody. Um, find a Medicare person. It certainly does not have to be our agency. Call somebody that you can trust that knows Medicare. So when we are talking to um, our folks, it's, you know, the whole conversation, the whole point of the conversation is, okay, you're eligible for Medicare. So obviously, if your birthday's in October, you're coming up and you want to know, do I have to do it? All that kind of stuff. So that's an everyday phone call for us. So the, where we start to explore is, well, are you eligible for retiree coverage? So I did talk to someone this morning at 1030 and she has retiree coverage. She's on a teacher program here in Michigan. She was on my calendar. I spent 30 minutes talking to her, but she's not going to be our, our consumer, our client, because she has access to retiree coverage. And she just didn't know. The problem with retiree plans is often that they don't communicate very well. So instead of her understanding exactly what she needed from her retiree plan, she has to come to an agent to try and figure it out. However, I can't, I can't help her beyond, you know, go tell her to go back to the retiree plan. So retire, just understand retiree coverage. If you have a retiree plan that you have access to, you need to start with them and you need to just ask, what are you eligible for? You know, how much is it going to cost? What do the benefits look like? If it is, if it's a higher cost, if it's four or five hundred dollars a month, I would tell you that absolutely talk to an agent at that point to compare. But if it's thirty dollars a month, do not look beyond your plan. Just sign up for your plan and be very happy and thankful. Okay. Now, lots of people are still working. They're turning 65, but they're actively working. They're at Ford Motor Company. They're going to work for three more years. Well, that's a case where they can just stay on the group plan. They don't have to, and especially with Ford, they're a large employer, over 20 people. They don't have to do anything. They can defer Medicare and they're not going to be penalized. Unlike that Costco article that I pointed out, that article said, if you're eligible, you got to sign up, right? Are you going to be penalized? Well, no. If you're still working and you have active coverage elsewhere, you do not have to sign up for Medicare. Now, opposite is small employer. If your employer size or if you're insured or maybe your spouse is on a plan with only eight people in the office, you absolutely have to sign up for Medicare. If you don't, 
I just did a video about this yesterday. And if you don't, you're going to have problems potentially with claims. There was a woman last year who had back surgery. She did not sign up for Medicare like she should have. She ended up getting a bill for $80,000. And that was 80% of the claim. It was a significant back surgery. They are still fighting about it. There's not much to fight over, actually, because she has to pay the bill. So you have to make sure that you know that rule. A lot of times, small employers, the group people do not tell you you know, that you you have to get Medicare. So it kind of falls through the cracks. So it's a really, it's a, it's a hot area that we see a lot of mistakes being made. I will tell you that the person left holding the bag is going to be you because the, the the group person or the employer, no one's going to come along and pay that $80,000 claim on your behalf. Okay. Because you should have signed up for Medicare. Now, people that are ACA or marketplace, if you're buying your own marketplace plan, um, and you're with MedMutual and you've been paying $800 a month for that plan, you're an automatic person that goes to Medicare. So when we hit that kind of person, then it's like, boom, next step, Medicare, let's get A and B in place. Let's go forward with that. COBRA is um, kind of dicey. It's often COBRA people, um, they have to go get Medicare. They don't understand that they need Medicare Part A and Part B. And sometimes they don't understand it because HR has come along and said, well, you don't need it. It's just like your, you know, your group insurance. Well, it's it's not in the eyes of Medicare. It's not like your group insurance. So again, I know I go through these very quickly. And then there's there's probably five to 10 other situations. You might have TRICARE. You might have veterans. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things going on. I'm just trying to give you a sampling of what we have to go through and why Medicare is not straightforward at all. Okay. Everything is different. It comes down to what medications are you taking? who's covered on a plan, and do you have a spouse, do you have kids, all that kind of stuff. So this is just kind of running you through some ideas. So if any of these things are um, questionable to you, you're welcome to ask the question at the end, or you can email us at the end, things like that. But the person then that we're helping when we become you know, agents basically is I need Medicare, right? So if I need Medicare, then my next step with that person is really, well, we have to go to the government and we'll, we'll guide you through how to do this. We are not the government. A lot of people think I work for the government. I do not, but we're gonna help you get there because we need to get your A and B set, um, set. The foundation of everything that we do is you have to have A and B in place, have to. You're gonna to go to the Social Security Administration to get this done. And then once you get A and B together, that comprises original Medicare for you, okay? Then we're gonna talk about too, how much is it gonna cost? Because cost is always a huge part of the conversation. So this is the cost schedule. So in 2022, when somebody files for Medicare, if they need to do that, they're gonna have a premium payment of at least $170.10, like I mentioned before. I think you can see my cursor. But 170, 10, and that's per person per month. Okay. What the government does is they look at your 2020 tax return up here. They look to see if you're filing jointly or you're filing singly, and they're going to look for your income level. They're going to pull that return from a couple years ago. Good example here is I just want you to understand too that these numbers can change uh, to some degree if somebody retires. And I had a great example of my friend the other day. He and his wife are working and they're in this second category here. So when he just signed up for Medicare, she is going to retire. So when he signed up for his Medicare, she's not eligible yet, but he got the bill saying it's, he's gonna pay $238.10 per month. And I said, well, don't worry about that. We're gonna go and we're gonna file, a, it's a form called an SS44. And that form, what we're gonna do in this case with him, I said, don't worry, we're gonna just file the form. Now that Jan is retiring, let's just say $70,000 of, of her income is reduced, right? So back out from 225-ish down 75,000, they're gonna fall in this category right here, 182. So all we have to do is you know, fill out the form properly, send it back into social security, and they're gonna revise it and his rate is going to drop to $170.10 per month, okay? So it happens all the time. The big thing is just know that you can do that, all right? Some people don't, a lot of people don't know you can do that. If you don't do that, like if he didn't know you could do that, we could let this go and then finally by 2024, when she's finally you know, looking back two years to 2022 when the income has dropped, then it would reduce, but don't wait, okay? We tell people all the time, just file those forms, 99.99% .99 of the time it works, okay? However, I'll bring this up because we're, you know, with what Eric does in terms of maybe Roth conversions and such, you need to be working closely with him to time these things because people, when they're doing it themselves, I will tell you, they mess up their Medicare premiums because they're not, they're not timing those conversions properly. If you're doing these at age 63, 64, 65, 66, whatever, um, just realize this is gonna come into play and we cannot appeal out of a, a Roth conversion type of thing. 
Um, certain things you can't, you know, get this reduced for, certain things you can, such as work reduction, work stoppage, divorce, um, death of a spouse, things like that. But if you happen to inherit a million dollars, you're gonna be affected by the premiums, okay? So some things, like I said, some you can appeal, some you cannot appeal. Now, there's also an additional surcharge. And at the end of the day, these are just surcharges on your income, okay? So there's a surcharge on the drug plan side of things. This is super confusing. We had a phone call, a message yesterday, a voicemail from a client who he popped up this year. He's been on Medicare for five years, but this year they did something in 2020 that it's the, you know, they're in the 228 to 284. And his, his voicemail said, he goes, was, he goes, but he goes, I understand why I'm paying the Part B increase. He goes, but I didn't buy another drug plan with the federal government. That's what it looks like to him. It looks to him like he's paying $32.10 a month for a drug plan, but he's not. He's paying $32.10 a month for nothing. He has a drug plan with us, and that's his confusion. So it's poorly worded in their letters, but understand this is a surcharge. These are all just surcharges you're getting based on your income. So you got to be kind of careful with those income flows. I show you this screen here just because it's interesting, basically, but this is the annual board of trustees that comes out every year with a new report. And this this year, 5.9 um, million people are affected by these high income surcharges. And you can see how it's ratcheting up. By 2029, they expect 10 million people. So that's a lot of wealth kind of moving through and moving up. And then also, they're always adjusting these brackets, okay? So they're really, Medicare and Social Security are always trying to capture more income for them to be able to pay out claims. So just know planning becomes even more important with these kind of numbers. So then after, you know, we go through all that, you know how much it's gonna cost, then we gotta get you enrolled into the Medicare system again. This is with the government, okay? So you've got three different windows to do this. You've got an initial enrollment window here, which just means that you're turning 65. Not everybody has to act and enroll, but this is their first opportunity to do so. Okay, this everybody seems to know this window three months before, three months after, blah, blah, blah. So that exists only one time. If you go through this and you do nothing when you turn 70 and want to get Medicare, this does not mean you get a three month after, three month before kind of situation. What you do get is this one you get a special enrollment period, and this just means you're typically leaving employer coverage. So this is the one where we help people all the time in retirement. And this is, I'm gonna explain quickly how you don't get a penalty. So everybody is scared of a penalty. This is exactly how it unfolds that you don't get a penalty. So when somebody, like I said, is working at Ford Motor Company and they're gonna retire at age 67, okay? They, everyone says they're gonna get a penalty for two years because they didn't enroll at 65. Well, that's not true. They're gonna contact us two or three months before they retire. We're gonna find out exactly when their health insurance ends. And then we know when it ends, if it ends July 31st, then guess what? We're going to start all of our policies and we're going to help them start as Medicare on August 1st. It's that seamless and that easy. What we have to do is we give people, a, there's another form called an L-564. That form goes with Mr. Smith. It goes off to Ford. He brings it to the HR there. They sign off that he's had coverage since he was 65 years old. And you're verifying to the government why you didn't need Medicare when he was 65. So it's pretty simple. He didn't need it because he had insurance at his workplace. That form goes to Social Security. That's it. They, you know, he indicates on the form when he wants his Medicare to start. He told them August 1st. Great. He got it done. They circle back to us and we say, okay, now you got a place. Now we start our other products. We start talking about Medigap and Medicare Advantage after the Part B is in place. But that's exactly how you do it. If you don't do things properly and at the end you get a, you have, you do have a third uh, enrollment period. It's kind of like an accidental or oops. And it runs January, February, March, and your Medicare can't start till July. Not many people have to default to that, which is why I don't even have a slide on that. I do want to point out HSAs. HSAs get really tricky with people and they're always super confused as to why this happens. So if somebody is contributing to their health, health savings account and they like their account and they want to keep it funded um, and they're not taking Social Security, that those are all good reasons to just keep doing nothing with Medicare. So when you're 65, you do nothing. So this person right here did nothing with Medicare at 65 years old. No A, no B, no nothing. So when he went to retire, we told him this was going to happen and it played out perfectly because he applied for Medicare up here on May 28th of last year. So he applied. When he applies on May 28th, what they're going to do is retroactively make his, his Part A coverage go back to November of 2020. There's no great reason for it. They just do it this way. And then that means we told him, just stop funding your HSA as of October 31st of 2020. And he did. 
So he was fine. Okay. Not every pe person has the luxury to have things planned out so perfectly. He did. It worked well, but that is what happened. So it played out exactly like it's supposed to. It's just a kind of a dumb social security rule. They are, they've been working on trying to change this. Um, there really is no reason to backdate coverage. And it really just trips people up with those health savings account contributions and things. So we're just here to tell you how it should work and shouldn't work. Now, all of that stuff that I just talked about, that stuff is between yourself and the government. We are, like I said, Sherpa guides. We can help you get there. We can't process things for you. We can't pay your premiums to the government. We can't do any of that, but we can help you, right, from the outside. This right here is now where we become insurance agents. This is where we start talking about our products. We talk about two products and two paths to what what we want to get you to full coverage, you know, for your Medicare. So you have one option and the middle option right here is is essentially it's it's pretty straightforward. It's easy. You stay on original Medicare, which is part A and part B. So I want you to understand first that whatever you do, you're going to pay your your money to the government. So that $170 a month, regardless of which of these two paths that you're going to pick, you're still paying that. OK, so when people are telling you that they pay nothing for Medicare, either don't believe them because they're paying and they're just not seeing the money come out of a Social Security check or maybe they're on Medicaid. Maybe they truly don't pay anything. But most people will tell you they pay nothing for everything. And it sounds really glorious, but just, you know, trust on the surface that it's probably not true. But you're going to pay your 170. In this case, you're going to stay in original Medicare, meaning you're going to keep your A and your B coverage intact. And what we're going to do is typically we will add on a supplement. Okay, so the word supplement, it just supplements original Medicare. We call it Medigap. Just to make it easier and a different word, we call it Medigap, and it's noted in the handbook right there. It's called Medigap. So we add a Medigap plan to your world, and then we add a Part D plan. All right, Part D is technically optional, but we don't let anybody not get a Part D plan. You have to get one or you're going to get penalized. We'll talk about that a little bit. But when you have original Medicare, what's really, really nice about this system and this way of having your, you know, having your health care coverage is that original Medicare is the government. It is all 50 states. You can go to any doctor in the entire country that takes original Medicare. The supplement that we give to you is just from an insurance company. All it is there to do is pay the bills. That's it. We just want you not to have monthly bills or, you know, bills and co-pays. That's why we give people a supplement. OK, and that's why we give them a drug plan. Medicare Advantage, totally different system. You can look at the words, they're totally different. It says Medicare Advantage is an all-in-one alternative to original Medicare. So what happens is you've got private insurance companies here that now take your Part A and Part B services, they bundle them into a plan. Often they put in Part D, which is drugs, and they often will put in vision, hearing, dental, things like that, okay? Now, because they're bundled and because they're created by insurance companies, how this is handled is the government is actually paying these carriers to manage your health care. So they are managed care programs, okay? So you will have networks, and that's not a bad thing necessarily. There can be good networks, and there can be, you know, bad networks in terms of being really, really small and tight networks, or there could be national networks. So it just depends on what plan you're looking for. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of Medicare Advantage plans, so I can't talk even in generality about any of those. But they often include Part D, and then, they, like I said, they often have some vision, some hearing, and things like that. If you go Medicare Advantage, I would definitely upgrade your dental and vision because the dental packages can be pretty strong with those. Um, you just have to know how these plans work, and you have to be okay with some of the, you know, the options within. So I'm going to run, th run through an example here. This kind of makes it um, make a little more sense to people. Again, on the bottom, please note, Part B premiums, you are paying those always to the government. You're not going to get around, get away with that. Even if you have an IRMA charge, this comes up once in a while, people think they can avoid the IRMA charge, that increased premium. If you're, you know, your rate is 300 or 400 or 500 a month, you cannot get rid of that if you go to Medicare Advantage plan. All right. So in the middle, this is a Medigap contract. So right now, people that are turning 65, if you want the most comprehensive plan that you can buy, it's plan G as in girl. All right. People pay a flat fee for this plan G. I'm just going to use an example of $125 a month. Okay, that's kind of the average 65-year-old in Ohio and Michigan, things like that. So this person pays her premium every month for $125. Now, she has a deductible. And if you remember back to that one slide, Part B deductible is $233. So she'll pay that, okay? There is no technically max out-of-pocket cost because after she satisfies her deductible at $233, as long as something is medically necessary and covered by Medicare, 
then everything's paid for. Okay, the supplement, the Medigap plan's paying the rest. So if she goes to an orthopedic surgeon, she pays zero. If she has to go to physical therapy 18 times this month because of a knee replacement, she pays zero for every visit. If she has chemo or radiation, she pays zero. If she goes into the hospital for 18 nights, she pays zero. Okay, so it's really important. Skilled nursing facilities, they will provide up to 100 days of full coverage, meaning zero, 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 zero. So when you look at the details of Plan G, there's a lot of zeros, meaning you pay zero. You pay your flat fee, 125, satisfy your deductible, and then a bunch of zeros, okay? However, do you get dental coverage? No. Do you get vision thrown in? No. Um, you do have to add that drug plan separately. They can be $10 a month. They could be $50 a month. We don't know until we know what medications you take. So you got to factor that in too. Opposite side of the equation is Medicare Advantage. And this is just from the price perspective, okay? So Medicare Advantage plans, many, 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 many of them are zero premium per month. That just means zero per month coming out of your pocket, going to the insurance company on a monthly basis. However, if you go into that, you know, if you go into a uh, an orthopedic surgeon, you're going to have a $30 or $40 copay. So you're going to have a charge. So you're not, you're not paying zero for everything. You're paying on a per usage basis. If you have, unfortunately, if you get chemo, um, you need you know, cancer, you need chemotherapy or radiation, you'll have a 20% is a typical co-insurance. Those are really, that's a really big number. Okay. Skilled nursing, you're going to get the first 20 days covered by Medicare, but on day 21 through 100, you're going to have a couple hundred dollar copay. Physical therapy, this one surprises people because so many people need physical therapy, whether it's knees or shoulders or whatever, backs. Um, physical therapy is typically $30 or $40 per visit, okay? So those can rack up. So you have to just go with usage. And if, you're, if your health is great today and your usage is nothing hardly, that can change, okay? So you have to be okay with that happening, right? Because if it changes, you're gonna start incurring some costs. So you really gotta pay attention to what style of plan that you like. Um, the Medicare Advantage plan, like I showed you with, you know, routine dental, they'll often come with free cleanings, a couple exams, um, uh, stuff like that, uh, maybe x-rays once a year at no cost. So you have to stay in network. So remember, everything you do on that side of things too, you have to stay in network. So for, for best pricing of all of those services, including your dental and your vision, you want to make sure you're staying in the network. The drug plan, plan premium is typically built in and at very times it's often zero. However, don't read that as, as drugs are free. I remember someone signing up, wanting to sign up for Medicare Advantage last year. And he said, well, I want to go to the Medicare Advantage plan because my Xeralto is free. And I said, well, how did you read it that way? And he, he read it wrong. Okay. His Xeralto is $42 a month copay, but the premium for the plan is zero. So he ended up going with Medigap and just getting the same $42 copay. So very often your drugs are the same cost. So don't think that those are just super stellar, free drugs, free everything involved, okay? So they're, they're just not. The reason why it's so important, uh, in our opinion, to really understand the differences between these two plans is exactly for this reason. So Medigap, you can see that it's very strong coverage. Yes, you have to be willing to pay for that and you have to value the insurance. Um, but if you want that path, you can, you can, there's, there's something called a Medigap open enrollment period of time. This only lasts for six months. And a lot of people don't understand this. So when they're first coming up to their Medicare eligibility, if they want Medicare, that's fine. That's great. Even if they're sick, let's say they have cancer and they're turning 65 next month. I can give that person the best Medigap contract on the market without asking them a health question. Okay. Um, that's not to say we can do that with Medicare Advantage people. So if people go into Medicare Advantage, and this is where people get tripped up, I kind of consider it the gotcha moment to Medicare. Um, they go in, let's say they call Medicare. You can actually call Medicare and get a plan. Medicare will give you a Medicare Advantage plan. So when you sign up for your Medicare Advantage plan that way, and you're 65 years old, and you're pretty healthy, and then four years later, you come out to um, us in the fall, because everybody thinks that they can change their plan whenever they want to. They call us in the fall, and they say, you know, I, I just, you know, I needed some more testing. I have this going on. I've got that going on. I had a stent put in a couple months ago. I want to change my plan. I want to get Medigap now. And I'm willing to pay for that. So the problem is we have to start asking questions. So these people are going to have to pass medical underwriting. And what medical underwriting is, is asking questions. You know, have you had lupus? Do you have cancer? Did you have melanoma? Did you have a stent? Did you have heart issues? Are you, what are you going through? Are you going through physical ther ther therapy? There's a whole bunch of questions we have to ask. If you can make it through, then you can have the Medigap plan. But if you're, you're declined, you're declined. So there is just no guarantee that you can get the Medigap plan down the road. Okay. So again, there's, there's six months up front, 
or six months when you're starting Medicare. So maybe you're 68, people confuse this. And when you're 68 years old, let's say you're brand new to Medicare. Again, you're retired and then we got you, you know, set up with your Part B. That's That person also has six months from his start date, okay? So it's not just age 65, it's 65 and enrolled in Part B, 65 or older, okay? So it's super important to understand that rule. Um, so we we really encourage you all to try and look at your insurance that you're purchasing as, you know, a seven, you're 75 now, you're 85, you're 90. I hate to advance all that for you, but, you know, think of when you're 85 and you're in a skilled nursing, you know, do you want to be dealing with some of the issues? Um, you know, maybe there's prior authorization or maybe, you know, there's things like that in the managed care plans that you're not so fond of. So, when, you know, when you're talking to people that but, and that's my point too, with when you're talking to people about everything is free, 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 and everything's great, that person's typically going in once a year for a physical. And that's wonderful, but things can change. And we unfortunately see those people that are changing all the time. So here's a, a good recap. Um, I know this is recorded, but if you want to take a screenshot even with the phone, that's probably a good thing to do. But Medigap, um, there's no, met, ne um, no networks. You know, you have higher monthly premium, but if you're sick, you have pretty low out-of-pocket medical costs when you need the treatment. You're not going to get those extra benefits typically. Some do have gym memberships and things like that. So this, not, this is not saying none of them have any perks, but you're not going to get the same things like the dental and vision typically. You're not going to have to deal with prior authorization. Rarely do they require that. You don't need referrals. You don't need anything to go to a specialist. If you want to go to a dermatologist tomorrow, you just go. And there's no prescription coverage included. Where Medicare Advantage on the other side, again, it's, it's commonly called Part C, which is kind of marketing-ish of the government, but it's typically HMO or PPO. You do want to stay in network for best cost. You do have a max out of pocket. That's a good thing. So the plans are legal limits, 7,550, though many are, are lower than that, typically, you know, 4,500, 5,500 kind of thing. Very often they're including those extra benefits. Um, they're managed care. So you very likely could require prior authorization at some point of your of your treatment. Are you okay with that? Do you want to be declined? Do you, are, you okay, are you just okay with that? You have to think that through. You might need referrals. Okay. They're, they're not as common as they used to be, but you might need referrals. And then prescription coverage is included. And just remember that it's bundled. So some parts that can be frustrating to people is if you bundle your drugs with your doctor plan, let's say your doctor doesn't take the plan anymore. Well, then all of a sudden you got to change to a whole new plan and maybe your prescription coverage has gone uh, doubled in price. So, so you're tying them together. So there's a little bit of risk in there. Now, what we hear uh, positives about Medigap um, is control. People love the control angle. You can just go wherever you want to go and when you want to go. Budgeting, if you're, like I said, ill or even not ill, you just know what you're in for all the time, you know, your max kind of obligations. Snowbirds are great. You get lots of snowbirds like we do, and you can go live in Florida for two, three months very, very easily. It's not to say you can't do those with Medicare Advantage. It's just much easier with a Medigap plan. But at the end of the day, you got to be okay with higher premiums. I joke with people because I know what every single one of you listening to today wants. I know what you want. You want Medigap coverage. You just want it to cost zero, like Medicare Advantage, and you want it to come in with, with dental benefits built in. That's it. That's what everyone wants. It's just not going to happen. It's not available. Um, but affordability, there's no doubt Medicare Advantage is phenomenal because it's zero. There's just nothing better than zero. Okay. So if you're going to stay healthy for the next 30 years and never go to the doctor, then you absolutely want, absolutely. Under 65, my call this afternoon with this person and going on to disability, um, we're going to be talking Medicare Advantage because these people, if they want Medigap, he's going to be paying $500 a month, which doesn't make much sense. So typically under 65 on disability, we're using Medicare Advantage. We've got some people, I've got clients that are on Medicare Advantage plans that are, they are okay with networks. They really are. The guy's 80. He never leaves, you know, the, the confines of his, his, his farm basically so that's fine and veterans veterans are a really great area where the the va actually recommends that people do get part b coverage as do we um then you can do a medicare advantage plan and then you can just create the second network for these people because then you're not relying specifically and, and solely on the on the va system which can be kind of tough now i'll talk about a little bit about prescriptions to try and wrap things up but the donut hole the donut hole, if you're hearing about the donut hole from people complaining uh, or you're in the donut hole, it just means you're it's a pricing strategy and it just means you're paying a lot for medications. And I will tell you, there are some people paying a crazy amount for medications. Um, we try and give you whatever solutions we can, but it's incredibly difficult. Um, I ran a plan the other day and I think it was 28,000 for the year. It's like people don't have 28,000 a year just to put into medications. It's absurd. Um, so it's just a challenging area. There's other challenges of Part D, and this is, 
you know, if you're going Medigap, you got to make sure you get that Part D plan. Like I mentioned before, you're going to get penalized. If you don't enroll in a Part D plan, you're getting penalized. At some point, when you finally do want a plan, you're going to get penalized. And that penalty does not go away. It stays for life for you. Okay. The penalty is about 35 cents a month, which doesn't sound like much, but it's every month and it compounds. And all of a sudden, if you're 70 and then you need a drug plan, you're looking at 32, $33 a month for the rest of your life. Okay. Diagnosis. We had somebody yesterday, he let his, um, his drug plan lapse from last November, I think it was really, really bad that he did that. He didn't pay the bills. We don't get alerted that the bills aren't getting paid. So it lapsed. He takes Zeralto. So he went in yesterday, literally, and got two medications for cash, and he paid $1,000, he told me. Now, he would have paid $42 if he had the drug plan. So if you don't have a drug plan, when you get put on Zeralto, you're going to pay $500 a month. All right? So super important. You get just get a drug plan. And then if you have a drug plan, if you're already on Medicare and you're listening to this too, and you have a plan, just know those plans change. Every September, they're going to change. Make sure you're checking what's what did change. You know, Did your drug change up the formulary? Did the pricing change? Whatever. That's a big thing in the fall that we help our clients with. So here's some resources. Um, GoodRx is great. Just just know that if you go to GoodRx, they're going to sell your data. So you're going to get you know, phone calls because they've kind of hooked up with a giant call center to sell more Medicare stuff. So you're like I said, you're that target. Um, but GoodRx is great. We use it all the time in our house. Cost Plus Drugs, that's Mark Cuban's new company. It's really good. He's add, They're adding new medications all the time to that one. Um, so that one's been kind of fun to see grow, and it's been interesting to see the um, the competition. So good RX pricing has actually gone down since he a couple months ago introduced this his uh, company, which is great. Simple fill, needy meds, these kind of places. Those are, you know, helping people with manufacturer assistance because some of these medications like a Humira or a Tesla, they're super expensive. And if you have those meds, we're typically going to say, you know, talk to the manufacturer to see if you qualify. Um, talk to your doctors, see if your doctors can help. And if you could do international, maybe you need to go to Canada to get their, I mean, there's just crazy stuff that unfortunately Medicare folks have to do. The reason is that, is that Medicare is not allowed to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies. It is horrible. I think it's completely wrong, but it's, it's fact. And they have to just take whatever costs the pharmaceutical says they have to pay and they have to deal with it. Okay. If you have low income, there are low income subsidies, which it does have to be pretty low. And those are federal programs. So here's what we're doing um, all different times. I mentioned that disenrollment period, that one right now, January, February, March. I've got one person, hopefully by the end of the day, she'll get approved. She's trying to leave a Medicare Advantage plan and go back to a Medigap contract. I don't know if she'll get approved, but this is what we're doing right here. Medigap, if you have an old plan, let's say your premiums are up, you know, um, underwriting can go on any time of the year. So Medigap is just like a car insurance policy, okay? You can just change any time you want. And then October and to December, that's our crazy time. That's when Joe Namath is really on the on the TV, right? It's October 15th to December 7th. That's when you can change your drug plan. That's when you can go into a Medicare Advantage plan if you want. Maybe you want to leave your Medigap and go to Medicare Advantage. That's fine. You start that January 1st, or you change drug plans, and that starts January 1st, too. Or maybe your Medicare Advantage plan, your doctor doesn't take it anymore, so you got to go to a different one, okay? So that's how we kind of handle those things timing-wise. When to talk about Medicare, always 64 and a half. It's just, to me, it's a no brainer. You can avoid mistakes, okay? This is just usually even a five to 10 minute phone call just to an agent to know what, you know, just say, hey, I am I am doing blah, 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 blah. Run through your kind of list. Those are all our calls are like that. Well, I'm turning 65, I'm on this coverage, I'm not gonna do this, whatever. But that's how we can help you determine if you're gonna make a mistake or not. We may not talk to you or help you plan, you know, with a product for three, four more years, but at least make that initial phone conversation. Here's our YouTube channel. So this, um, again, Medigap versus Medicare Advantage is one really tough decision for everybody. So we did a recent webinar on it. It was an hour and a half. We condensed it. Cameron did a 16 minute YouTube video. That's been super helpful and super popular. It is posted right there on YouTube now. And you really have time to just stop, pause, rewind, watch it again, whatever, but get your questions together and hear things you might not have heard today because there's just so much I can't dive into for 16 full minutes on those two pieces. But lots of our stuff is on here with, you know, supplements explain, how do you go for part B? How do you, you know, just all sorts of stuff. So we're always trying to add to that YouTube channel. We're podcasting now. We've got another episode to launch next week. We did one uh, last week about the uh, same thing, Medicare Advantage versus Medigap. Um, the next one. Uh, oh, is it just a, it's just one segment? It's 47 minutes just devoted to Medigap. And then the next one will be just devoted to Medicare Advantage. So we're always adding, you know, really kind of detailed messages if you want to hear them. 
uh, maybe you're a listener versus a watcher. Our website has information all over that. This is how people contact us. We, you know, we get lots of people just calling or they're on my calendar or on, on all our agents. And I will tell you, there's a whole team of people. This is not just me because there's no way I can handle the amount of people that need help with this stuff. But um, most of our agents are licensed in Ohio and in many states. So you just, you know, get a call. If you need a call, if you're a retiree from the school system for teachers, we can't help. Okay. So we really suggest not calling and email is great. We'll help you with email, but we just can't answer those questions. So for people that need products that need help with all this, they're retiring me. I got to go to Medicare. We can absolutely get you there. And that's how we kind of work. Uh, here's q and I'll put just our information at the very end here. Um, you can always email that info at G Medicare team. I will answer those emails. There's our website, phone number, things like that. And then there's a list of states. And um, those are the core states we really want to be focusing on because it's very difficult just to be licensed in every single state in the union. So so anyway, and if we don't, you know, if we can't fit something into, we, we actually have great referrals to people all over the place too. So 1254, I didn't leave much time, but I got it in. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Joanne. That was a lot of great information. And I know we have some questions already in the chat. So we will try to get to as many of those as we can. I do know we're coming up on our time. So if we don't get to those um, in our time today, I will send them over to Joanne, get those questions answered, and then respond back through email. So let's go ahead and hop in. Um, the first question is, my wife is still at GE and I plan on going back under her GE insurance at 65. Can I delay part B until she retires, which would be 70 years of age for myself? Yes, you certainly can because GE has over 20 people. You can just go on her group insurance. She's going to stay as the active employee. You're going to defer Medicare. And then when you come out at age 70 and need it, then you're going to get part B uh, with that form, the L564. You'll be fine. Our next question is, can you register for Medicare but still work full time with full insurance as spouse on health insurance as well? You can. You want to make sure you're you're probably just going to apply for Part A only, and that's hospital coverage, and it's free. So why not do that? The only reason you would not want to do that is if you're contributing to an HSA, because you don't want to be enrolled in any part of Medicare if you are funding your HSA, your health savings account. But I would be really cautioning people, do not sign up for Part B of Medicare unless there's a really good reason to do so, in addition to having work or group insurance. You don't need both. So don't pay Medicare and have group insurance. The next question is, are there any prospects for government-sponsored long-term care? I really don't think so, and Eric might even know more than I do, but I would be shocked to see that happening. They can't even get dental added to Medicare. <laughs> Our next question is, my wife is younger than me and still working. She carries medical coverage for the family. Can I sign up for only Medicare Part A and stay on our current plan? Absolutely, as long as the employee of her, her employer has over 20 employees. And then you just want to be cognizant of if you're putting money into an HSA, be careful that you don't fund that if, you, if you're fine with that. Then yes, you can stay on the group plan of hers. This next question, does the cost go down after you retire in year two and beyond if you are in the higher income bracket year one of retirement? It's always going to go back two years. So this year, they're looking at 2020 returns. Next year, they're going to start looking at 2020 returns. So it's just going to be what your modified adjusted gross is those years. So if it floats downward, then sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to go down. This question is asking if, I, I believe it's asking if the Medigap plan G is capped. I think you're asking about max out of pocket. The really, the only thing your obligation obligated to do is pay the deductible at 233 so that kind of is your cap if you will so there's it pays everything else so if you get sick with the plan g you are in heaven because it's phenomenal insurance i think you might have touched on this in the presentation but they're asking what is the issue of hsa and part a you can't be so with Medicare as long as you if you if you enroll in Part A or Part B, that means you're not able to fund and put money into that health savings account any longer. So you want to be careful that you're either not signing up for Part A or you're not funding the health savings account. Technically, that's how it's supposed to be because Medicare is not a high deductible plan. Okay, and it looks like we have a couple more. I'm trying to get through all of these. Um, this one's asking. I'm 60, retired, and have retiree health care. My company requires that I get Medicare 
at first eligibility with my retiree health care as secondary coverage, which has its own network. In your experience, is there one plan that plays well with secondary insurance plans? Well, you have retiree coverage. So you, what you, and typically, retiree plans are very strong. So I would not encourage you to get out of that. Um, and then they're doing things that are absolutely normal. They're requiring you to get A and B, you stay in your retiree plan, your retiree plan acts as your supplement. And those are, they're, they're technically usually uh, group Medicare Advantage plans, but they're very strong, they're very good. So you probably don't have a ton out of pocket costs. So I would just tend to not knowing much more, just stay put and be happy that you have retiree coverage because so many people listening do not have retiree coverage available to them. Okay, and I know there's still questions coming in. We'll go ahead and end on this one and then I will get all other questions over to jo Joanne um, and your answer back to you. This last question is going to be, why do you suggest to stop contributing to an HSA after going on Medicare? Because you have to. It's pretty easy because you have to. That's the, the way the law is with Medicare, you know. So um, you can ask your CPA, but you need to st not contribute if you're enrolled in either part of Medicare. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you again so much, Joanne, for taking us through all of that content. I know Medicare is very confusing, and I know there's still some questions that we didn't get to. So again, I will get those over to Joanne and get those answered and back to you via email. I just want to close out with a couple things. Um, Eric's contact information is up on the screen if you'd like to reach out to Eric about any questions. Um, and then you have Joanne's contact information that she shared previously if you'd like to reach out to Joanne as well. But with that, I know that was a full hour packed with content. We truly appreciate you guys joining us and hope you'll join us for a webinar again soon. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.